Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Brie Bonomo. Hi if you're new here or hey if you've been here before. Today we're going to be talking about the final video in my list of favorite and least favorite characters in books. And we're finishing strong with my least favorite male characters, some of which I outright hate. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. Coming in at number five, we have everyone's hit or miss person, and that is Edward Cullen from the Twilight series. Edward is on this list because he's a creepy guy. And <laughs> I could just leave it at that, and I'm sure everyone knows what I mean. But realistically, when I read Twilight back in the day, I enjoyed it and I liked Edward. I was actually team Edward, but there still was some things that, you know, as a teenage girl, like I sometimes would get a little earth about, but as I get older, I really realize just how weird Edward is. Um, and even though I haven't read Midnight Sun, I heard that it's still kind of weird, but really Edward is an older vampire. And if we're gonna go off my theory <laughs> that like, if you die at a certain age, then your brain just kind of stops as well, then it makes sense that he's still really 17 in all sorts of the sense. But most of the time people don't write vampires in that way. And as such, Edward is very cultured and smart in other ways. So it just is kind of weird that he is going to be doing some of these really creepy things such as watching over Bella while she sleeps and getting very territorial and just a lot of masculine traits that are very popular in romance that are kind of toxic. And as such, that is why he is on this list, but he's number five. So it's not the worst thing out there. <laughs> there are definitely more people on this list that I despise even more than Edward. Such as number four on this list, which is Ollie from Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. Everything Everything was pretty popular, I believe, when it came out in 2016 because it was a book about someone who was allergic to everything and couldn't leave her very medically sealed house. Um, obviously, this book is another one that's kind of controversial, but the reason that Ollie is on this list is because, well, yes, you could say that this girl took a lot of risks and it was insta-love and there's some issues with that. Ollie doesn't do anything to help keep Maddie safe in this book. He actively helps her escape her home, puts her life at risk, and just kind of lives in the moment. And for that reason, he's just dumb. I don't, I just don't know if it's just because I am a different person and I'm maybe a female and that's why. I don't know. I, I'm not going to say that's not really the case, but... I just can't imagine that someone would tell me that they're allergic to everything and that they can't like leave their home and whatever and then be like all right yeah i'll assist you to like let's break out of your house and go on this wild adventure to god knows how many different places and expose you to everything you've never been exposed to in your entire life sounds great <laughs> i just can't imagine myself doing that at any age so the fact that you have this kid who is just, just like yeah i'll go with it and yeah, that, that's it. I think that's self-explanatory. He, again, a lot of times with these characters on this list, it's not that the characters are written in a way that's supposed to depict them as like a bad guy or like not always thinking things through. Usually the characters are written in a way that you're supposed to like feel sympathetic or like them but they're they're not actually good characters they're written poorly and that is why most of these characters are on this list and in this case i think ollie just had a very big character flaw by romanticizing the potential death of someone essentially when we're putting it directly so that's why he's on this list number three <laughs> this is probably going to be a controversial one and the reason that they're on there's two they're, they tie the reason that they're going to be on this list tied at number three is because they come from the same book series and I have a, a big issue with how why these characters were demonized and then switched around and like one was demonized in one book and then the other one was demonized and really to me it comes from a lack of character development and needing a quick 
way to kind of bait and switch the readers and get you on a different side. So without further ado, we're going to have Tamlin and Resand from the Court of Thorns and Roses series at number three for my least favorite characters. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. I did like Resand reading this series, and I do like Akomath. I mean, not for necessarily all the, the sexy times that everyone likes about it, but I just really liked the story, and I liked Resand's character development. But I would be hypocritical if I said that I didn't like Tamlin exclusively without kind of reasoning. The reasons that I like Resand are also because of, in some way, poor character development. In my opinion, as a reader, who didn't enjoy the stories, Tamlin was completely demonized and I felt like a lot of his character switch in the third, like the second and third book, were really just a, a switch of convenience because we needed a good way to make room for Resand to be the main love interest. I personally don't think Tamlin had enough built into book one to make him be such a villain in the rest of the series. And because of that, Resand, who looked as was looked at as a villain in the book one, then did a complete 180 as well. And I don't feel like there was enough there. Like, sure, there was explanations in the later books, but I don't think the explanations were foreshadowing. So I, that's why I kind of have to put them at both, because <laughs> I just felt like if there was a little bit more thought put into some of their character development and some of their actions, like, it, you know, I, I think it would have been a little bit better. But because we are here and on this list of least favorites, I have to include both of them because at the end of the day, I don't like either of their characteristics. I think both of them are very controlling individuals. There is that very typical male dominating control, but also like you're my mate, so we're mate for life and, and all that kind of stuff. And that's all not always appealing to me personally as a reader. And they both kind of have like where they always have to prove that they're like super understanding and, and going to be the best. And yeah, like that's just, like, it's just not my cup of tea. But the controlling stuff is really what it gets me. And the whole mate stuff. Like, why can't we just have partners that we love? Like, why? I mean, because in reality, I feel like it's a very much with this face stuff that Sarah J. Mass likes to do is very much similar to how the wolf, um, werewolf culture is as well. Um, where, like, you have, like, these very, very strong masculine presences, but they're very toxic. So, that's, I'm, I should probably, I could go on for a rant, but basically... It is very much there, just like that controlling factor. And then later in the series, which is spoilers, Resand kind of tries to like double down by not being that way, but in a way is even worse. So yeah, they just, there's a lot of points in the series where both of them as characters annoy the hell out of me, even though I would liked them in some other instances. But for the most part, I just rolled my eyes a lot during this series. Moving on, because I could be here for a very long time to talk about number three. We're going to talk about number two, and this should be no surprise to anyone, because the counterpart to this character was in my least favorite females. And that would be Jace Herondale from the City of Bones series, the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare. Jace is an annoying little shit, let me just tell you. <laughs> I don't know if it is because I read this series as an adult, but I think I'm just over the bad boy for the sake of being a bad boy vibe in most cases. But with Jace, I don't know what it was, but him and Clary put together were my worst nightmare. I literally couldn't stand them on the page. And most of the time I didn't want to read it when they were present. It was definitely the side characters that propelled me to finish the series in the first place. But... Jace just, he started feeling very bland to me after a while because he really was just a caricature of a bad boy with like a sad past and that is so overdone and I, there were parts again where like I could jive with him and I liked some of the things he did but like I don't, I just felt like every time him and Clary were together they were insufferable and I don't even know if I have the words to explain it fully because I just remember, I blocked out a lot of reading. I don't remember a lot of the stories because I wasn't, I just didn't like the story as much as I wanted to. 
And therefore, I think when I read <laughs> Jace and, and Clary most of the time together, I just kind of forgot what happened with them. I was much more interested in Magnus and Alec and Simon and Maya. I was, they were more interesting. So maybe it was just because he was too bland for me, even though they were trying to say that he wasn't bland, if that makes sense. So he's just at number two. He, I, I don't like him. But I like Jace a little bit more than my number one. And my number one is a, a recent person. Because I, I saw the series and I didn't... I, I, and when I watched the TV show for this particular character, I didn't really like him. However, reading the book series just threw that angst for this character out the window and like t pretty much became like the size of the sun. Because he is terrible. And that would be Bill Compton from the Sookie Stackhouse Vampire Mysteries series or True Blood, the TV show. Bill is literally the worst. I do not know how he would ever be considered a love interest after book one. Because even in book one, he's just not a good person. He throws a lot of... He tries to tie up the moral high ground a lot of the times, but then would kind of like leave out his past and try to kind of convince people that he was better than he like all of his other vampire counterparts and he lies to Suki constantly he never tells her the full truth which puts her in danger so often and because her blood does smell better to other creatures and vampires she's always at a risk so he, he knows this and I think he knows more about what she is even though we haven't got to that part in the book series yet, but obviously if you watch the show, you know. Like, he he knows more and, again, puts her at danger. And also, I'm going to have a small a spoiler alert for this part, even though I think this whole video is spoilers. But in one of the books, I won't specify which, I am just going to put it out there. There is a scene where he is, like, pretty much almost, like, drained and like he's not dead but he's like he he's just very weak because they haven't fed him blood and he was held captive and during this time there is a very very explicit scene where he sexually assaults Suki. i'll just put it out there so obviously trigger warning for this series but that scene literally made me hate him and a big part of it was because he doesn't apologize in the book and then it's never brought up again. And it made me so mad, like, reading that scene. And I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, he, like, you, you say you love this person, but at the end of the day, they're just a blood vessel for you. And yeah, so that made me extremely upset reading this series. And not that, like, an upset in a trigger way, I can understand it being triggering for people. But for me, it was more just like, you are a shit person, sir, and you do not deserve anyone, personally. So those are big reasons why <laughs> I hate Bill. Also, he's another character who's a bit controlling of his love interest. And even though Sookie can be a little bit annoying, she deserves better than that. And that's my two cents. So there you have it. Those are the five male characters that I detest on various levels, but... We are at the end of this wonderful saga on my channel. Let me know down below if any of these characters would also make your list. And if there's any characters that I mentioned that you also agree with, definitely let me know. We can just go off together and have a whole conversation. <laughs> so as always, you know, these videos are just my opinion and why I don't like people, but I would love to hear what you guys think down below. And until next time, I'll see you then. Bye.